Don't come to Brussels right away. First go somewhere else. Uh, get to know Europe better. European Media Governance, the Brussels Earth's Frequency. But if you like to work against the flow, stay tuned to know all the answers to the who, what, where, when, why and how, the questions you should have in mind before coming to the European capital to report Brussels from Brussels through radio. Why are you a journalist? You say, journalists are uh, like people, like priests, you know? In the middle of the night, you wake up and there's a voice and he said, you have to be priest. And then they go to... <laughs> and sometimes the voice said, you have to be a journalist. Yeah? You can't give a good reason for it, but you like to be it because it's... Uh, yeah, and I, it's very happy that, that there's still young people that want to do it. And if you feel the call, as Peter Kramer says, the Secretary General of the Association of European Journalists, we let you know that you're not alone. However, the number of foreign journalists in Brussels has recently declined, Brussels is still undoubtedly one of the largest international media centers in the world. However, around 900 foreign journalists are based nowadays in Brussels. The critics towards reporting the European Union in daily media still exists. Well, uh, first of all, we need to consider that unfortunately we don't have so many journalists who are involved in European affairs. We need journalists to take more time to realize the impact that the European institutions have today on our everyday, everyday uh, life. Because we know, as you know very well, more than 70% of rules that are regulating our daily life are rules uh, having a European origin. Defense Paolo Macagnotti, president of the European Journalists Association, an association whose main goal is to inform about European integration and promote interest among the citizens regarding European affairs. And that's the word that scares most of the people in general, European affairs, for the lack of knowledge or for the automatic association to political jargon, has the French correspondent for Radio France, Grégoire Lory, explains. It's really difficult and every time you're writing a piece for radio, you have to think, okay, it's the first time that I'm going to explain this issue. And so sometimes you have the feeling you're repeating yourself, but it's very important. Otherwise, it's easy to get lost. Um, even here for us, sometimes it's we're lost with all the articles, constitutions, treaties, okay, uh, what this article means. So even for us, it's difficult to so imagine for your audience, uh, which doesn't follow every day, hour after hour, what is happening. Sometimes you may have the feeling that you're repeating yourself, but it might be one of the solutions not to lose your audience attention in radio. Radio is a very specific work tool for journalists. It's fast and it can be listened to everywhere. Annette Riedel, a senior journalist for German public radio Deutsche Land Radio, defends that reporting politics through radio has a magical feeling. It's easier because you can be uh, very often we can be faster um, maybe the agencies are even faster but other than that we can be really quick because though the written press of course does not need to have any kind of pictures or, or uh, audio or whatever and do not need any kind of on-air um, speakers or, or sound bites for that matter since they only have one uh, journal, newspaper, whatever, per day, they can't be really fast. That, of course, is beginning to change and has already changed with the Internet. Dominic Dolne, the chief operating officer of Euronet, the European radio network, argues the same. Of course, I'm convinced that the radio still have uh, many advantages. Radio is a, is a very easy to, to, to use uh, media. Uh, in comparison with TV, you can listen to the radio uh, 
uh, anywhere you are, uh, you are not obliged to 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 read a paper. You can do it while you you are doing something else. And uh, in comparison with uh, the, the the internet, uh, of course, internet uh, go fast, but the radio is also a very fast media. But you probably already know all the advantages and disadvantages of radio. What you probably don't know is how to navigate in the Eurobubble and to report from it. Let's take Katharine Umberger, a young German journalist that is nowadays in the Brussels office of Deutsche Land Radio doing her internship. And let's analyze the basic difficulties that you'll find when you are a newly arrived journalist in the so-called European capital. When I first came here, um, the first thing I had to learn is where is uh, which institution, where is the commission, where is the parliament, uh, where is the council, just uh, in, in the, the buildings. <laughs> and uh, where do I have to go? to meet this person and this person, where do I have to go to uh, this press meeting, this press briefing. And um, then I had to learn uh, what is important, what is not important. I have, I have good colleagues who take me everywhere and uh, show me everything. And yeah, that's good, but uh, I'm still learning. In the Schumann and Throne areas, the European Parliament, the Commission and the Council are easy to find, at least with the help of a map, during the first few days. What is more difficult to find are the sources to your story, but pay attention, because the majority of the sources are inside these buildings. If we start with the European Parliament, you will have at least 754 sources. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Well, Marlene Chausbra from the European Parliament Spokesperson Services explained us why. In the Parliament uh, we have uh, 754 spokespersons, which are the members of the Parliament. So the, the um, spokesperson uh, of the Parliament, the officially one, the Director of Media, he is, uh, he is only speaking when it's uh, institutional questions, uh, questions not uh, ref referring to legislation, uh, but, but uh, questions in connection to the institution. As But the Parliament has much more to offer to journalists. You can use the Parliament radio studios for free and some technicians are at your disposition with no any additional cost. And talking about money, the Parliament sometimes gives journalists some help for the ticket to Strasbourg. The journalists will not get everything reimbursed, but they will receive a certain amount. And you just need to apply via your press officer of your member state with no extra requirements. As long as you are accredited, which you will need as a proof that you are working as a journalist, you will be able to book the facilities and have direct access to your press officer. The Commission also has good sources, apart from the briefings, the press conferences and meeting the relevant EU civil servants in the Berlemont building, the building that houses the European Commission, is the midday press briefing. Pia Arinkeldin Hansen, spokesperson of the Commission, argues that the spokespersons in the European Commission task is to explain the initiatives of the European Commission, the major policies that the Commission presents and how they will hopefully improve the conditions of businesses and citizens across Europe, explaining also how the team works. Each spokesperson is responsible for communicating on his or her portfolio because the commission is organized according to portfolios, like there is a commissioner for each portfolio. So every spokesperson has that responsibility. But of course, typically the environment spokesman must know what the industry spokesman says because the, the issues are linked. So it's very important that we coordinate our messages and ensure that indeed there is consistency in our messages and in the way we present the Commission's initiatives. The midday press briefing is not only a place to get quotes, but also a place to network, especially if you are a newly arrived journalist in Brussels. Lorenzo Consoli, an Italian senior journalist based in Brussels, explains why after so many years he still goes there on daily basis. 
maintain, I go to the media briefing every day and I maintain oh. that the media briefing is actually important. Uh, first of all, because uh, when you go to the media briefing, you know what things are, uh, are, what are the things in the air, what thing, what, uh, what uh, journalists are, are uh, after, what uh, they are trying to communicate. Uh, so it's it just to keep uh, updated uh, is important. Uh, to keep updated. Uh, secondly, uh, it is a good uh, uh, occasion to meet the colleagues mm -hmm. and also the spokesperson, uh, not so much to have their uh, spin from the podium, but to speak to them afterwards or before, uh, try to understand better a few things, that perhaps off the record, when they speak off the record. Mm -hmm. And third, uh, I think uh, it, uh, the media briefing has become a, real, a little bit a political ritual as well, I mean, with a political value. Uh, what is said or not said in the media briefing has an impact on the uh, commission on the commission policies. Off the record, the council also provides contextualization and backstage political pressures to journalists and also facilities for radio journalists, as Isabel Brusselsmans, audiovisual councillor of the Council of the EU, explains. In terms of specifically for radio journalists, what we offer here is uh, uh, recordings of all the, the sound bites of the ministers, because of course here we are in the council, our main business is to host events where uh, ministers in different, uh, dealing with different types of, uh, of competences are coming here to meet. At 27 around the table they discuss uh, and there is a kind of scenario for these meetings which uh, offers a lot of possibility to do press work uh, when the ministers arrive here in the, the building at the VIP entrance there is a, a space there for uh, journalists to be able to access ministers on arrival so that they, they can ask them questions um, after that of course the ministers they uh, they uh, go in, into their meeting, so they become less visible for journalists when they are meeting. But sometimes when the ministers discuss legislation, then they meet in uh, a configuration which is public. It's called public deliberations of ministers. These are recorded, video and sound, so there, and we offer uh, the material, so there is a possibility to record with all this amount of information, it is pretty easy to get lost. Some more skeptical journalists defend that the best way is not to solely use them like the Irish correspondent Arthur Bisley. A friend of mine would say it's not like we are seals waiting to be fed fish every single morning, you know? After collecting all your sources, it is time to tell your story. But when? The perfect timing is a problem that you will always face during your work experience in Brussels. Here, the decision-making process is too slow to be reported. Between two or five years, this gap period will be your best frenemy, like the Dutch senior correspondent Constantin Sade says. You have to, to uh, be very good in timing. That was very difficult for me, to be honest, in my first year or my first two years. When do I time, uh, when, when do I choose to bring a story? If it's already done, you're too late, of course, or when it's halfway, it's too early. Uh, but you can say that a nice and a good moment is when uh, the debate is, is growing, growing to, to a certain momentum and, and the, the ministers or the, the EU summit is coming up and deciding upon it. The national angle is the key to connect with your audience, but sometimes you might need to look for new perspectives from other member states, like journalist Dori Simon advises, describing details from other European realities that interest your audience, and by the end of the day, it's not so difficult to sell your European story through radio, says Gavin Hewitt, presenter at BBC News Europe. I think you can do much more uh, with radio in terms of uh, describing the detail, the real story. I mean, the magic of television is that it takes you uh, and gives you a great sense of place and of what was happening on the streets or what was happening at that particular meeting. But the, the television is much harder in dealing with, in handling complicated ideas. 
and complex stories, you can do much more with radio. Um, the arguments on radio tend to be much more sophisticated than on television. Uh, and I people have begun to understand that, that uh, in terms of communicating complex ideas and themes and stories, uh, there's a lot to be said for radio. However, it is also true, and I know this because I work in television as well, is that, of course, nothing can compete with television in telling a dramatic story. But when you're dealing often with European affairs, it's not like a very dramatic story, and therefore radio is a very powerful way of dealing with these Hard work is the base of success in every area. Maria Laura Franciosi, president of Journalists at Your Service, is a senior journalist that started reporting EU affairs 20 years ago since the Maastricht Treaty. With all her work experience, she leaves some words of wisdom for newly arrived journalists. Three words to tell new journalists. Study, study, study. So it's really, you have to learn that whatever information you get, there might be another side. So study means study, go study the, 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 the issue, but also go behind what you see. Study means also uh, try to find another source, to find concrete examples. With that amount of dedication, you might think that the European institutions are your own, but you might need to find a real one in Brussels. For that, the Brussels Europe Liaison Office provides you with helpful assistance. Emily Bovy, coordinator of the unit Administrative Assistant, explains how. The office was created in 1991 by the government of the Brussels Capital Region, and so we are a non-profit organization. And uh, we have two, two different main objectives. The first one is really to, to promote the image of Brussels as capital of Europe. And so we try to facilitate exchanges between expats and citizens of Belgium. Uh, for this, we, we organize different events like um, guided to uh, master classes, so classes on Discover Brussels. Uh, we also have um, informative campaigns for students. We have also a newsletter in three languages every month. Um, and the second main objective is really to uh, facilitate the settlement of expats in Brussels by uh, providing them free administrative help. So uh, any question concerning registration to the commune, uh, you want to, um, to, to know French, so we can inform you about where you can find a, a course. Um, any problem with your lease contract also, we are there to give you information about this. For more tips and advice from journalists, institutional press offices and independent bodies, please consult our blog, reportingeuropeanaffairs.wordpress.com by Karina Fornade, Floyd Coutinha and Sofia Trindade, Brussels, 2012.